I've got a lot of fond memories of coming down to Kiama on first year geology trips. And just incidentally, uh, some of the best basalt columns you'll ever see are just in the, the quarry just up the road here, so check it out. But we're here to talk about copper and cooper. And if you're not a copper bull after listening to that Tribeca talk, then I don't know what's going to convince you, but I'm definitely a copper bull. And Cooper Metals can give you some significant exposure to the rising copper price through discovery of copper gold deposits. OK, quick corporate snapshot. We listed about just over 12 months ago. We've got 46 million shares on issue, about a market cap of about $13 million, cash of $3 million. We're very tightly held, so the top 20 have over 50% of the company, and we're very proud to have Iwella with 5%. They're very astute of vet investors, and they've made a lot of money in resource stocks over the years, so that's a great endorsement for Cooper Metals. Our board members, we've got a lean board, there's just three of us, a couple of old guys, including myself, so I've got 30 years as a geologist, working internationally and also domestically in mining and exploration. I've spent quite a bit of time in copper. In fact, I started my career in copper mining in Queensland and I'm back there again now looking for copper gold deposits. We've got uh, Michael Frayne, our chairman. He's got 30 years, trained as a geologist, but mostly worked in finance. And we're balanced out by young Tim, who's a financial advisor and he's been working in the UK and Australia and he's pretty handy with a cricket bat, so I hear as well. Now I won't cover this because I think it's just been really well covered by Tribeca Talk, but I would like to say that uh, copper is very difficult to substitute. So this is why it's, you know, it's a critical mi mineral and the International Energy Agency has said that out of the nine critical minerals, copper is the most important. So, of course, this is leading to a looming supply gap that was well covered and a rising share price, sorry, a rising copper price. So, Cooper Metals has three projects. We have two in WA and we have one in Mount Isa region. The Mount Isa project is our flagship project and that's mostly what I'll be discussing today. So the Mount Isa region, as you would know, it's been a, a, a producing centre for copper, zinc, lead for over 100 years now. It's uh, very prospective for copper gold deposits. And we have a very large land holding in this area. So we've got 1,600 square kilometres of land through, this, through the Mount Isa inlier. And there are numerous copper deposits and occurrences in this area. There's been a lot of M&A activity recently in the whole Mount Isa inlier. You've seen Harmony Gold. They've, they've just recently picked up the EVA deposit from Copper Mountain. Uh, you've seen D Metallica get taken over by AIC Minerals. So it's a hotbed of M&A activity. Now, our strategy is to look at a lot of these old copper occurrences that were mined in, in the last 100 to 50 years. But there's been hardly any drilling in this area because a lot of the majors thought these deposits were probably too small for their needs. But Carnaby has really shown that there is significant copper to be found in this region. And if anyone's familiar with the Carnaby story, they've already found three deposits. They should be putting out a resource later this year. And we hope to emulate their success. So Carnaby is shown in yellow down here. In brown are our, our tenements throughout this region. And we've just recently had a new tenement granted up in the north near the Barbara deposit. The De Bar Barbara deposit's about 5 million tonnes at 1.6% copper and about 0.2 gold. And they're the sorts of things that we're looking, looking for. We've had some initial success in our first year with some discoveries of economic intercepts at the King Solomon mine. So this is a pretty busy slide, but King Solomon was a a mine about 50 or 60 years ago. There's a series of shafts and small open cuts that traverse about one kilometre area, but there'd been no drilling in that area. So we went in there and we did some geophysical surveys, including induced polarisation, and then we did some drilling and we hit significant mineralisation under these old pits and shafts. So you can see some of those mineralised intercepts there. 19 metres at 1.6% copper and 0.2 gold. And this also had a higher grade core to it, around 4 to 5 metres at about 4 to 5% copper and 0.2 gold as well. 
So we found mineralisation over about a 650 metre strike length through here, and the mineralisation tends to plunge in three shoots. So if we go to a long section, so that's a slice through the ore body, we can see that there's three plunging shoots. This, um, just go back one. These, these coloured contours here is the induced polarisation survey, which shows a chargeability anomaly. So where you get the hot areas, you do expect to get more copper metal. And the little dots are the drill hole intercepts into, in, into this section. So we found three plunging shoots, and the good news is that the chargeability anomaly continues to the southeast, so the copper mineralisation is open at depth. I'll just show you a couple of sections through this area. We've got a section in the north and a section in the south. And the sections show that you know, there's mineralised intercepts down to about 170 metres deep. Uh, it's still open at depth, and so we're currently reviewing King Solomon to, to see where we'll be putting our next drill holes. Um, the, we've had a great start here at King Solomon, but our strategy is to find a number of shallow copper gold resources that we could then potentially toll treat for many of the options, such as the Glencore Mill at Mount Isa. Now, I mentioned that we have several, we have a large land holding and we have several copper gold occurrences to follow up. One of our um, interesting areas that we're working at the moment is called the Ardmore Tenement. Now, that is just north of Mount Hope, so Carnaby's Mount Hope, where they've been getting some spectacular copper gold intercepts. And uh, Carnaby had drawn this IOCG, or iron oxide copper gold corridor, going up through their land into our tenement here, shown in yellow. Now, we picked this tenement up late last year. We've gone out there, we've done some rock chipping, we've found a number of good high-grade copper gold rock chips, up to 17% copper with 0.3 gold in this southern area here and also another group up here in the north. So I've currently got a team out there. They're doing some more rock chipping and soil sampling. The idea is to get a good indication of where the main body of copper is. Then we'll follow that up with some geophysics. The induced polarisation will give us some indication. Is there any depth extent to this mineralisation, then we'll go in there with some uh, RC drilling, hopefully in the first half of this year. So this is a really exciting area for us. But we do have multiple copper gold prospects to follow up. There's Yarraman, Sylvia May, Scorpion, Historic Mine, and multiple VTEMA targets. So VTEM is an airborne EM survey that we did about six months ago. And that generated about 60 anomalies. So EM is basically designed to find conductors or bedrock conductors that may be due to metal in the ground. Now, we found a number of anomalies that we're chasing up. Some of those have got uh, mineralisation at surface and some of them are just false flags like graphite, etc. So we're working our way through those and we'll be drill testing them throughout 2023. Now just moving over to WA, so our Guru project in WA is a copper gold project as well. It's about 400 kilometres northeast of Perth and it's near Silver Lake's Deflector Mine. Now Deflector Mine has about 1.2 million ounces of gold and about 0.8% copper. It's a bit of a weird beast for the WA gold fields because there's not a lot of copper gold deposits in, in the WA gold fields. So we believe we're in a really exciting area here. There's no infrastructure, there's no mineralised terrain. We've picked up a tenement that's a, that covers about 26 kilometres long of Greenstone Belt. Now we've gone in there late last year doing some soil sampling and we've picked up a number of gold anomalies, which I'll just focus on now. So those gold anomalies, we've found five gold anomalies and very importantly, one of those gold anomalies, anomaly three, is right on the tenement boundary, or our tenement boundary. And so just this week we announced that we've acquired the tenement next door. And we acquired that for $50,000 worth of uh, Cooper metal shares. So I think that's a real bargain. And we're extending our soil survey onto that, onto that tenement. 
We're just commencing an airborne magnetic survey this weekend in this area and that will help refine our geological model because what's really important for these areas is to understand the geological structure through this terrain. So these red lines are indicating faults in the area and mineralisation often forms along these faults. The magnetics in the area at the moment is quite broad spacing so we're doing some detailed magnetics relatively cheaply then we'll interpret that and that'll help refine the gold, gold model. We'll follow that up with some geochemistry on the ground and then we'll do some auger drilling followed by RC later in the year. So it's in a really exciting greenfields terrain. So really just to wrap up the key takeaways are that we've intersected significant copper gold in our Mount Isa East project already. We hope to find a whole lot more of those. We've got a massive tenement holding, 1,600 square kilometres of tenure, multiple copper gold occurrences which we're working through. We'll be doing a lot of drilling this year, testing those occurrences. Field work is already underway. The guys have been out there dodging the rainstorms around Mount Isa, but doing some good work on geochemistry at Ardmore, just north of Mount Hope. And we'll be doing some geophysics there a bit later and drilling later in the year as well. Significant gold anomalies at Guru. Our, we've got a very modest market capitalisation, so we're highly leveraged to any discovery, any exploration success should really see a strong share price appreciation. And thanks for your opportunity to talk today. Thank you.